from the News Channel 5 Network. This is Urban Outlook. Hello and welcome to Urban Outlook. I'm April Eaton. Thank you so much for being with us today. Just a few years ago, Education Week released the four troubling truths about black boys in the U.S. educational system. It said, one, black boys are more likely to be placed in special education. The second truth, black boys are more likely to attend schools without the adequate resources to educate them. Three, black African-American males are not reading at the adequate level. And the fourth truth, punishment for black boys is harsher than for any other demographic. Let's take just the educational points and talk to one organization that's trying to help our young black men, making sure that they have those educational skills, especially the literacy and numeracy skills. Todd Campbell is executive director of Backfield in Motion, which is a nonprofit group that helps at-risk males achieve their high school diplomas and beyond. Thank you so much for joining us, Thanks Todd. For having me. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about those truths. And again, this was a couple of years ago that those truths came out. But how true are they? When you heard me say about, you know, they, they're placed in special education way too often, they don't have those adequate skills, they're not testing well, what do you say to that? Well, uh, you know, one of the biggest things is, yes, that was a, a while back, but it's, they still hold true. Wow. Um, unfortunately, that, that's just the nature of, of what we deal with in education. Uh, I actually have been in education for over 25 years, um, and that's one of the things that we've always faced with is for, for these guys. And, and so if they still exist today, you've got an organization that's been around for almost 20 years now, right. Backfield in Motion. Talk a little bit about how your organization came about and how you're trying to help. So Backfield in Motion initially was started about 20 years ago um, by a gentleman by the name of Joe Davis. And the, the original intent was just to get the guys in the, in the inner cities and the at-risk kids involved in athletics. Mm. Uh, but then it kind of morphed into more the education piece because I think everyone started to realize that you can be involved in athletics, but without the education, it's kind of a null and void situation. So it's really gone forward more to now, we focus pretty much on the academic piece as far as numeracy and literacy skills and those types of things. And, uh, and also character education. I think that's a big thing for our guys uh, as far as the character education piece. So the athletics piece now is just an incentive to keep them in that's our program and those hook, type of things. Right, that's, to that's get that's them the to, the, to the court or definitely, to the field. Definitely, right. that's, the, that's the big thing. And, and are you finding that uh, through those years, you've noticed that it's easy to hook young men in uh, with the athletics, or is it tougher these days to get them interested in the offerings that you have? Well, you know, it's a little bit of both because you have some, it's easy to get those guys who want to do the athletics, but at the same time, there's a lot of guys out there who wanted to be in our program. That's kind of why we had to switch around how we market our program, because a lot of kids thought it was just athletics. So you had a lot of kids who needed our program, but because they weren't necessarily athletic kids, they were they were veering away from us. So we make sure now that you know that our, our main focus is academics. Yeah, you, we talk about, uh, and I think it's in your mission statement, at risk, focusing on at risk kids. I, I, I don't necessarily know how people register with that term, but, but it is true right. that kids face certain risks these days. What do your kids face? Well, our kids have a little bit of everything. Um, you have a lot of kids who are single parent, who come from single parent homes. And, and, and I'll tell you, when you say single parent homes, people just automatically think it's just the mom. Right. But sometimes it's the opposite too. Hmm. So you have a lot of dads out there who are trying to do good stuff for their kids too, but they may be working so much that they can't you know, be that father that they need to be there for them. So our guys come in and help that. Um, we have a lot of kids who um, perhaps they, their parents want to excel excel in education, but the kids, you know, they just don't have that, so we, we give them that piece too. Mm. So it's a lot of things, you know, when, when they say at risk, I think it's a, like you said, I, I think sometimes it's a, it's not necessarily seen as what people think it is. Right. Uh, are, are the students that you work with um, also struggling with maybe the things that might be happening in their neighborhoods that aren't so nice? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, 
unfortunately, that's a lot of the kids that we have. Uh, and I think backfield is, is, a, is a safe haven for them. Because yeah. we try to keep them as long as we can throughout the day after school. Uh, they get out of school at either 3.30 or 4 o'clock, and we keep them till almost 7. So we try to eliminate some of the time, like, because obviously when kids first get out of school, that's when they're ready to do stuff. So we try to keep them engaged in what we do. That way, hopefully by the time, if we wear them out good enough, by the time they get home, they're, they're ready to lay down so they don't have that problem. Right. Nashville these days, and, and some of our communities around Nashville, we seem to be seeing, and I don't know if it's just the headlines or, or the true facts, right? But we seem to be seeing these stories where younger and younger young people, 12, 13, 14, arrested for very serious crimes, right. carjackings and stealing guns and stealing, period. What do you think is going on with our young people? Well, I think, obviously, the media the social media that kids have now, it, it accentuates a lot of that stuff. Uh, because you see kids have Instagram and they see all these pictures and they see things that other people are doing so they want to emulate those, those types of things. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't you know equate to being hard or whatever they think it is, so sometimes they get in trouble. I think for us, what we try to do is to give the kids an avenue where they can still you know be cool kids and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But be involved in other stuff, you know, uh, as far as, you know, like you said, seeing the kids uh, getting arrested and those types of things. What we've tried to do, like, for instance, we um, we got with Howard Gentry, who's uh, a court clerk, and we got with Lionel Matthews, who's a juvenile court clerk. And we did a program with them and showed our kids the movie When They See Us because we wanted the guys to be, you know, engaged upon how to deal with certain situations, those type of things, because we, we want them to understand that it's not always don't don't always be the stereotype that people think, you know, or that they see on TV and those kinds of things. Let's do let's do something different. Let's be opposite. And for some who may not know, the When You See Us documentary is telling the lives and what happened to those four black males, uh, five black males right, rather, in right. Central Park, New York, uh, who were arrested and accused, uh, and now, as it turns out, have been uh, acquitted for those right, crimes that right. they were supposed to have, to have committed. So, a very powerful piece. I wonder uh, because uh, you, you hear talk about that, and it's even tough for grown-ups to watch. Right. What was it like to watch your young men? watch such a powerful uh, series of stories about what happened to young men who were probably their same age. So I think the, the biggest thing for our guys that they took away from it is just that they kind of, I, I felt like they kind of identified with some of those guys yeah. because on, much, on a much smaller frame, but just on some of the things that happens to them at school. You know, sometimes they're accused of doing certain things because they're from this neighborhood or because they're this kid or that kid. Um, so I think they, they kind of identify with some of those things. Um, but I don't, for adults, I think that show kind of made some adults a little upset. Oh, but yeah. for the kids, oh, yeah. for the kids, I feel like they kind of saw that and say, okay, you know, I just need to be more cognizant of what's going on around me. Interesting, very interesting. So backfield in motion, let's talk about your numbers and your okay. success. Uh, as, as we said, been around for 20 years. Talk just a little bit about the impact, what you've been able to do with the young people that come through your program when it comes to elevating um, not just their knowledge of what ha what's happening in the world, but their educational knowledge, their reading levels, their math levels. What have you seen? So we've seen a great increase in what we do, uh, as I said, our focus over the last couple of years has really been literacy. Mm -hmm. We've really been kicking in with literacy. We've actually aligned with Metro Nashville schools uh, in what they're doing as far as um, the, the whole literacy aspect. Uh, Tennessee Department of Education, we do a lot of things with those guys. Um, simply because we realize that literacy, I mean, obviously if you can't read, you're gonna, have, you're gonna struggle in not just English class, but you're gonna Everywhere. struggle in every class. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that we've really focused on. Now we do a lot of STEM stuff with our guys. Um, but we focus, like, as I said, like, we just finished our summer session. Our summer session is not like a lot of programs when they have just kind of, kind of just play in the summertime. We actually have classes. We have classes, um, they're, ex you know, shorter classes, but, you know, they have math class, they have ACT prep, they, um, they have science classes, they have art classes. And then in the afternoon, we allow them to, we focus on sports and athletics. Um, but we've really tried to push up our numbers. What you'll see is, um, is that our numbers of the ki the kids that we have, our numbers will tell you if you look at if you go to some schools that our kids are doing much better mm -hmm. than they were before they got in our program. Not necessarily just ac academically, 
but also in attendance and also in behavior because that's another thing that we focus on. We try to talk to the guys about, you know, how to act in class. You know, you say yes sir, you say no ma'am, and, and those types of things just to make sure that you, and, and we want you to be a well-rounded young man. Yeah. Let's take a quick break and when we come back I want to talk more about some of the success stories that you've seen and then ways that people can get involved and maybe enroll their young men. I don't know if you've Definitely. got any spots, we got plenty but we'll find out about that when we come right back. Stay with us. We'll see you soon. <laughs> 